Hey everyone, before we begin, I did want to talk about a few things really fast. So in my last video, I talked about hiring an editor so that I can put out more content. Well, that has officially happened. This is my first video that I actually haven't edited. So I'm really excited because I'm going to be able to step away from the editing process so that I can make more content for you guys. So you can expect a ton of videos in this next upcoming week. I know that I've said this in the past and kind of dropped the ball on things, but I mean it this time. There's about to be a ton of scary content. That being said, if you have a scary story of your own, please submit it to me at my website at southerncannibal.com. Also, I know you guys hate the sponsors, but there is a sponsor somewhere in the middle of the video, and it's about a minute and a half long. I know you guys hate that stuff, but I just wanted to let you guys know that it is in this video. And the last thing, I've mentioned this in all my videos lately, but I've been streaming on Twitch, so maybe stop by and hang out with me sometime. Alright, that's everything I wanted to say, and I'm sorry for all the interruptions before the stories. Now if you're all ready, let's begin. I want to start out by saying that I'm a 25 year old male, average but broad build, and I'm somewhat taller at 6 foot 1, so not what you'd usually consider an easy target or victim. I'm an avid outdoorsman. I love being in the middle of the woods, either with friends or alone. There's a certain peace I find when I'm sitting alone by a stream with nothing but nature all around me. I specifically love hiking and I usually start hiking in the spring. My favorite spot to hike locally is in a small town in southwest Ohio. This is normally a very peaceful, quiet, and relaxing place. Usually you'll run into a couple of other hikers or families swimming in the creek nearby, or just a few animals along your trail. This day, however, well, it turned out to be entirely different. It started off like every other hiking trip, I grabbed my pocket knife and water bottle and headed toward my spot. Once I arrived, I picked my favorite trail and started down the loop. It was a windy day in mid-spring and I had been hiking for about half an hour when I then heard what sounded like a woman screaming for help in the distance. I paused momentarily at the bottom of a small incline, listening closely when I heard the scream yet again. At this time, I ran up the incline to see if there was someone injured nearby who maybe needed help. But when I reached the top of the small hill, my stomach wrenched and I got the feeling that I should just go on about my business. So following my instincts, I did just that. After that, I stopped a ways up ahead and listened again. I hadn't heard the noise in a while, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't hear it again. The wind blew once more and the noise came back as the trees swayed back and forth. I decided that the noise was from the trees and just kept on my trail. As I tried to shake the eerie sick feeling in my stomach, I rounded a bend in the trail and as I got to the clearing around the brush, I saw a man on his hands and knees on the ground with his face in the dirt. The man had a dog with him and he was wearing a backpack. I figured that he had dropped something and was looking for it, so I just kept heading his way down the trail. As I drew closer, the man looked up at me and stood up from the ground. He was a larger guy, probably about six foot four if I had to guess. Pretty stocky build. His face looked like that of a drug user. He blocked my path. I stopped about 10 feet from him, standing facing him, maintaining eye contact and distance. He had asked me if I ever smelled these flowers as he pointed to them on the ground. I then said, no, I haven't, as friendly as I could at the time. He then looked at me and said, Every spring, I have to get down on my hands and knees and smell these flowers. They're just nothing like you'll ever smell. I kind of just gave a, hmm, that's cool. He paused for a few seconds, and I could tell he was sizing me up. After his pause, he said, Yeah, you should smell them sometime. And he paused again, halfway motioning for me to get down and smell these flowers. Fuck that. I said, yeah, maybe I will some other time, and he then gave me a look of subtle frustration, giving another long pause. I broke the silence by telling him that he has a really pretty dog. Yeah, she's a really good girl, he said, 
At which point then, I decided I had enough of this interaction, and I said, Alright, well, I'm gonna keep on my way then. The man paused again, and he just told me to take care, and then turned to keep going down the opposite direction of me. I started walking again, and after about five seconds, I peered over my shoulder just to make sure that he wasn't following me. But he was gone. He had completely vanished from the trail in just a couple of seconds. You'd think I would be kind of relieved to be away from him, but not knowing where he was really put me on high alert. I decided to try and enjoy the rest of my hike and went down this trail that I had always seen but never explored. The trail then went about a quarter mile through a field with trees on each side of the trail. Then at a sign with a map, split off into three mini trails that all led to backpacker campsites. As I went down the trail, I stopped for a second to use the bathroom and then check over my shoulder again. Nothing. I made it to the sign at the split and my stomach wrenched again, telling me not to go down that trail anymore, to turn back. So I did. I turned back and I started back down the trail to the main loop. I pulled my knife from my pocket and had it ready in my hand. I was about halfway back to the main loop when I then saw the man yet again in the distance. He had doubled back and was now walking straight towards me again. I've went over this in my head a hundred times and it just didn't logically make sense for him to turn around because it was only about a quarter of the way through his end of the loop. I was about three quarters of my way through the loop since we were heading opposite directions. He walked toward me, a lump forming in my throat and my stomach still turning. As he passed me, he had a look of annoyance on his face. He then saw my hand with my knife in it and just said once more, Take care. And just kept walking past me with his dog. Luckily, that was my last encounter with him and the noises I heard. I'm pretty positive there was no woman at all. I don't really know if he was truly a person or some kind of creature imitating a person. But I don't really care. I think those screams were actually a lure that luckily I didn't fall for. As for the rest of my trip, I hurried quickly out of those woods that day. I do still hike there, and I do still go on that trail, but I now won't do it without my pistol on my hip. I think he planned to trick me into smelling the flowers so he could avoid a fight and then hit me while I was down. God only knows what he would have done. I think because I was armed and I followed my instincts is why I came out of those woods that day. Maybe it doesn't sound so bad in this retelling of my story but I know what I felt that day. No matter what your gender or size is, you can be a victim if you let yourself be. Always follow your instincts, always be aware of your surroundings, and always be prepared to protect yourself, especially if you're alone in the woods. I was helping my boyfriend move from Wisconsin to Colorado. I had driven out to Wisconsin and picked up some of his stuff while he carried the rest of it in his own car. So we were driving separately. Somewhere in the middle of Nebraska towards the end of the day, we found out that his car was having some issues that would need to be repaired before we could make the rest of the trip to Colorado. We decided to stay at the motel for the night and find somewhere to repair the car at in the morning. We took the car into the shop and it was actually able to be repaired before the end of the day. The shop called my boyfriend to let him know he could come pick it up, so I drove him out there. When we got to the shop, I realized that I'd left my phone at the motel. I wasn't too worried as even though I wasn't too familiar with the area, I figured I could follow my boyfriend as he drove back to the motel for the night. As I saw my boyfriend exit the shop in his car, other cars shortly followed behind him, so I lost track of him. I decided to try and find the way back to the motel on my own, to the best of my memory. It was pretty much just straight down the main road until you saw the sign for the motel on the left side. I kept driving down the main road until I realized I had never even seen the motel sign. I was lost and I really started to panic as I had no phone and I had no idea how to get back to the motel. I began to notice a white SUV that was following my car for about five minutes. He eventually pulled into the lane to the left of me. Sitting at a stoplight, I saw the man in the white SUV motion to roll down my window. 
Being confused and not really knowing how to react, I rolled it down. Hey, what are you doing? He said. Uh, nothing, I replied, not really sure why he was asking this. Well, why don't you uh, pull over and come talk to me for a second? After hearing this, I quickly shook my head and then rolled up the window. The last thing that I wanted was to be stranded in this town with some weird stranger following me. The light turned green and that's when I saw my boyfriend's car then pull up right behind mine. I then pulled off into the closest parking lot, to which my boyfriend followed. Luckily, the SUV was nowhere in sight. He said he was trying to catch up and find my car once he didn't see me at the motel. I let him drive me back that night so we could return for my car in the morning. Thank goodness my boyfriend had found me at the right time, as I'm not really sure what would have happened that night if he hadn't have found me and if that man in the SUV had followed me any further. This happened when I was about 11 years old while I was on a trip to another country during the summer. My mom and dad had separated when I was younger, so I had came to visit my dad during the summer. It was very late and he wanted to take me and my cousin, who I'll call in for privacy reasons, out to a nearby town. Now, since my dad's car had an opening in the back, I asked Anne if she wanted to ride in the back with me. Since she was two years older than me, making her 13, which is still pretty young, she said sure. It was a bumpy road, so we kept moving around in the back, and it was really cold. Keep in mind that it was really dark outside, and the only thing lighting up the way were my dad's headlights. At some point, I'm guessing the convo died, and I turned around to see a tall man with a suit standing behind a tree, facing the car. The thing is that the man had no face. Like, I'm being legit. I saw no face, but a white circle for the head. I was so scared, but turned back around, and I just shrugged it off as being the trees, or just my mind playing tricks on me. A few minutes later, I remember the man, and I turn around again, out of curiosity just to hear a blood-curdling scream coming from my cousin as soon as I turned around. The second I turned around, my vision was covered with something white. When I heard the scream, I threw myself onto the car and so did my cousin, causing the car to shake a little. She then stares at me and she asks, Did you see that? I looked at her terrified and nodded. She started describing the figure that I saw earlier, and then I connected the dots. I realized that when I saw all white, it was most likely the figure's face up close to mine. The first time, I didn't really believe what I saw was real until my cousin told me she saw the same thing. We laid down there until we got to the town and then ran to tell my dad. He obviously tried to calm us down and just convince us it was nothing, but I was still really terrified. I'm 15 years old now, and I recently reached out to Anne to ask her exactly what she saw that night. And she explained it perfectly in the same exact way that I saw the man. Really tall with a suit and a tie, and no face. Hey everyone. Apologies for the interruption, but I wanted to talk about today's sponsor, ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you probably feel like it's about time people stop treating e-commerce giants better just because they're bigger. And you're right. That's why ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers of all sizes access to the same deeply discounted rates that are usually only reserved for Fortune 500 companies. It's no wonder ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. ShipStation also allows you to save some money while making shipping a whole lot easier. But ShipStation doesn't just save you money. ShipStation works with over 45 carriers, easily compare rates and delivery times to quickly find the best option every time. It also works with over 300 platforms like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and more. And it can automate processes like fulfillment and tracking so you can save time managing orders. Don't let all the big guys keep all the discounts to themselves. Sign up using promo code CANNIBAL for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com. 
and start saving with every shipment. That's two whole months of discounted shipping, absolutely free. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in Cannibal. ShipStation. Make ship happen. During the Christmas break of 2021, my family and I planned a trip to Florida. There was nine people and two dogs, including my parents and grandparents from my mom and dad's side, as well as my aunt and uncle and my two cousins. We left from my house in Delaware at around six in the morning on Christmas Eve. Since my cousins have a Tesla, we had to stop quite a few times to supercharge their car. One particular time, we were in a small town in South Carolina, and it was around 8 p.m. Of course, since it was winter, the sun was already down, and we were charging in a darker area of the town. The charger was in front of a closed Dairy Queen, and some of the streetlights wouldn't work. Regardless of this, my family and I decided to get out of our cars and stretch a little bit. I walked to my cousin's Tesla, and I began talking to them, planning out where we would stop next for food and how far we were from our first destination of Savannah, Georgia. The dogs were in front of the cars playing fetch. My dad and uncle were playing with them while everyone else was in their respective cars. Everything was going fine until we all heard a really loud screeching noise coming from the woods right behind us. I originally thought it came from my earbuds as I was listening to music, but when I looked at my cousins, I just knew that it wasn't from my earbuds. The dog stopped playing and immediately ran to the fence that separated the parking lot in the woods and then started barking like crazy. Usually my cousin's dog is the calmer one between the two, but he was going absolutely insane just barking and growling. My dad and uncle kept calling them, offering treats to distract them from the screeching, but they were just way too focused on whatever was in the woods. They couldn't leave the cars as both were charging and filling up gas so one of my cousins and I decided to go grab them. I was in the middle of hooking up the leash when all of a sudden my dog pulled away from me, jumping on the fence and barking. I pulled her away from the fence, quickly pulling her towards me and hooking her to the leash. She wouldn't start barking or growling and her fur was sticking up, meaning that something was definitely in the forest. My cousin wanted to go explore, but my aunt stopped him saying that whatever was out there was probably really dangerous. I decided to flash my flashlight in the woods so we could see if anything was in there without being close enough to get hurt. What my cousin and I saw next scared the absolute hell out of us. It was a tall figure standing behind one of the trees. It looked like a person, but the closer I edged towards it to get a better view, the more distorted it became. My father had already told me that it would take another five minutes to finish charging, and I was already hoping that those five minutes were over. I pretended like I didn't see anything, flashed the light around a couple more times, and calmly headed towards the cars again. My cousin then looked at me with really fearful eyes, and I knew that I wasn't making anything up. He was the type of person who didn't believe in the supernatural, and he was a very skeptical man. So seeing his scared face really scared me. My other cousin peeked out of the car, asking me in a scared voice if I saw anything. I didn't want to scare her, and I calmly replied that I didn't see anything, and it was probably just an animal, and she then calmed down. The dogs were still barking really loudly, and I managed to calm them down with treats and toys. And I went to my uncle and dad, who were now talking about our next stop. I quietly pulled them away from the car so that my younger cousin wouldn't hear, and I then told them about what my other cousin and I saw. Both of them immediately believed me and told us to go in the car and lock all the doors, and that they would come inside shortly. My cousin went to his car, and I went to mine, telling my grandmas and mom about what happened. A few minutes later, I saw my dad walking towards the car, looking a little stressed. He got in and, without a word, pulled out of the parking lot. I saw my uncle doing the same, and we slowly and quietly then left the parking lot. We had to drive in the woods for a while, and I could tell my dad was a little nervous. I looked down at my phone, and I then saw my cousin messaging me, asking if my father was acting weird. 
I told him that my father hadn't said a single word since we got in the car, and that he looked a little nervous. He quickly replied that his dad was acting the same exact way, and that every time someone asked him what happened, he wouldn't say a word. I was a little freaked out about this, but I told him to ignore it. He agreed, and he asked if their behavior had something to do with what him and I saw in the woods. Before I could reply, my dad then slammed on the gas, looking to his left. My mom yelled, asking him why he did that. Then finally, he spoke. But the words that came out of his mouth then sent chills down my spine. Something is following us. None of us could say a word, and I quickly wrote to my cousin about what my dad had then said. He said that once my dad sped up, his dad did too, then cursing and looking to his left. I slowly turned to the left as well, and a scream left my mouth. Beside our car in the woods, I could see something running. It looked like a humanoid, but it was running on all fours. My dad then looked at me, seeing why I was screaming. He then sped up even more, reaching the nearest exit that he could find. Pretty much immediately after he took it, the thing stopped running next to us. I looked down at my phone, and I saw a spam of messages from my cousin, telling me about what had just happened. My eyes widened as I looked back, and indeed, one of my cousin's tires were now flat. I told my dad, and he told me there was another gas station down the road, and we would fix the flat tire. We reached the station, and I went inside the 24-7 store with it to go to the bathroom. I decided to buy some snacks for my cousins, and I guess I was still in shock from what happened. The cashier asked me if I was okay, and for some reason, I decided to tell her everything that happened. As I told her what happened, my cousin came in next to me, and he told her what happened to his car. As we told her, I saw the color drain out of her face, and then she uttered something I'll never forget. We don't have a station anywhere near that town.